Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest back again today is Laura Loomer, investigative journalist and congressional candidate in Florida. Welcome back, Laura. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about what's going on over in Israel. Um, after 4,000 rockets were fired uh, with the intention of killing as many Israelis as possible, um, under extreme amounts of pressure from the Biden administration, Israel agreed to stop the hostilities uh, on the premise that Hamas stops firing rockets at its civilian targets. Uh, as of now, three days later, things are still calm. My question for you is there are so many talking heads in the media that have literally let loose with a barrage of anti-Israel and anti-Semitic conversations seemingly without any redress from their employers. There's one in particular I'm looking at now, uh, this contributor at CNN, Adil Raja, wrote dozens of pieces for CNN. And one of his most famous tweets is, the world today needs a Hitler. And these literally stayed up for years on Twitter and nothing was done about it. So my question for you is, how do these blatant anti-Semitic reporters remain on the air for so long? Well, uh, you know, it's something that it's a phenomenon that I've really been exploring as an investigative journalist for the last several years and as a Jewish uh, reporter myself who has been uh, banned and deplatformed and defamed by the mainstream media. You know, they're so quick to silence an openly Zionist investigative reporter. And Twitter, for example, is so quick to silence any criticism of Hamas or any criticism of radical Islam, like they did in my case when I was uh, condemning Ilhan Omar for being Jewish, I mean, for, for being anti Jewish. I, I was banned for a tweet in which I said Ilhan Omar is anti Jewish, and yet Twitter allows for. Uh, you know, the Ayatollahs and they allow for uh, these very, um, you know, vicious anti-Jewish reporters at CNN and talking heads in the media. Um, and, you know, CNN is just one example, of course. You've had examples like this from uh, reporters at Al Jazeera, uh, you know, uh, the Council on American Islamic Relations, of course, has a Twitter account and they were found to be supporting Hamas. So it's not just limited um, to, you know, to the media. We have a systemic Jew hatred problem in this country, not only in our mainstream media establishments, but also in Silicon Valley. Well, you, you raised my favorite, wink, wink, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Um, when Hamas was firing rockets by the train load, I mean, 4,000 fired at only civilian targets, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, um, Ashdod, Eshkelon, the Kibbutzim, the freeways, the hospitals, the schools, right? She comes out with a comment that Israel is committing acts of terrorism against Gaza by striking the missile launchers in Gaza. God bless Marco Rubio, who came out with <laughs> one of his best quotes, and this is it, Ilhan Omar is out of her mind. And well done, Senator Rubio. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a lot of support right now. What do you make of that? Well, look, I hate to say I told you so, but look, I was uh, exposing Ilhan Omar prior to her even uh, becoming a member of Congress. And one of the things that I was hitting her um, hardest on, uh, you know, when she was first campaigning to become a member was her Jew hatred. And I remember I went to a joint campaign event in Minneapolis with uh, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, where I asked Ilhan Omar and Rashida to condemn Hamas and whether they were gonna recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And Rashida Tlaib's reaction was to physically assault me and slap my phone out of my hand, uh, you know, which I, I then filed um, assault charges against her and sued her for assault and battery. But this isn't a new phenomenon. You know, people like myself were chastised and called anti-Muslim and Zionist extremists. For, for trying to hold her accountable for recognizing our strongest ally in the Middle East and for, um, you know, expecting her as a, you know, uh, 
a congressional candidate and now a sitting member of Congress to condemn Hamas, which of course is recognized as a terrorist organization by our by our government. Um, but uh, now they're seeing it for themselves. And I see that, you know, Senator Ted Cruz and others are now calling them cheerleaders for Hamas. But, uh, you know, it wasn't too long ago when I was being called an anti-Muslim bigot for calling Ilhan, Rashida, and AOC the Hamas caucus, a term that I coined uh, specifically to highlight their hostility towards Israel and Jewish people. Well, I'm on the uh, the Loomer train on this one, 100%. I, you were out front first, you were loud, and you were in everybody's face, and nobody believed you, I think. They believe you now. And here's yeah, another one. This is something you know, about the phenomenon. See something, say something. And everyone likes to talk about white privilege, but I want to highlight Muslim privilege because that's the only privilege I see in this country where, you know, if you're a white American or especially if you're a loud and proud Zionist, people are hypercritical of you and your political statements. But if you're a Muslim and a radical Muslim, uh, you know, like Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib are, you are given an excuse for everything that you say. And, and everything is, is tailored uh, through a victim mentality or a victimized lens to provide protection for these women when they make very anti-American, anti-Jewish. And I'm not, I'm not even, you know, just talking about anti-Israel criticism because I don't think that, you know, simply criticizing Israel makes you an anti-Semite. But when you say that Israel is a nation of terrorists when they simply defend themselves from Hamas rockets and Hamas attacks, you are saying that any Jew or Christian who defends themselves against Muslim aggression is a terrorist. So, you know, you might as well be, be, be preaching Mein Kampf as your gospel because what you're preaching is anti-Jewish, anti-Christian genocide. Well, it gets even more absurd, Laura, where you've got uh, a tweet later uh, in the week following um, the hostility ramp up where Omar was saying that it's a act of terrorism for Israel to defend itself against Gaza for, get this, because Hamas doesn't have Iron Dome, therefore Israel should not blow up the rocket launchers. Yeah, well, last time I checked, it was Hamas that was firing rockets and missiles into Israel, not the other way around. And so simple solution, right? Simple solution. If, you're, if you don't have an iron dome, then maybe, just maybe, don't fire missiles and other explosive devices and lethal devices into Israel. I mean, these people, they, they don't seem to think, they don't seem to understand um, that uh, acts of aggression are going to be met with um, even greater resistance, uh, you know, by the Israeli government and the IDF. And what I find to be most disturbing is that Israel and, and the United States, but even more so Israel, seems to be the only country in the world that um, is expected to not defend itself when being under attack. If, if Mexico was firing, and this is the analogy I like to give people, if Mexico was firing rockets, if the cartels in Mexico were firing rockets into San Diego, the United States military would flatten Mexico. They would wipe out the cartels and they wouldn't even think twice about the casualties. But for some reason, we're supposed to value the lives of Palestinians more than the lives of innocent Jews and innocent Israelis, uh, you know, simply because of uh, false and over-exaggerated concepts of, uh, you know, um, of uh, and explanations for the uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict, which, <laughs> you know, is, is really being perpetuated. The aggression, when you look at it historically, is, as we know, is being perpetuated by one side and one side only. I don't well, care what- uh, This conflict started when missiles started flying over the fence and Israel put up with it for weeks before they said enough is enough. So in London um, last week, there were mass demonstrations supporting Hamas and cars were filmed driving through London neighborhoods with people screaming out the window and sometimes on bullhorns, frick the Jews, rape their daughters. And they didn't say frick, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, it was incredibly upsetting to watch it. And the message that one man said on video was, we have to send this message to the Jews. Why <laughs> is not the British government, the French government, the German government, the American government stepping on this kind of activity. 
Well, look, I mean, this is what happens when you allow for Islamic infiltration into your government. Uh, just last week, or was it a week or two weeks ago, right? Sadiq Khan was reelected as the mayor of Londonistan, and I call it Londonistan because they have essentially turned into, uh, you know, a Muslim country. The United Kingdom has been totally infiltrated by Muslims. And London, they have no-go zones. And I find it to be rather hilarious that the concept of no-go zones for years, for the last decade, have has been uh, considered a conspiracy theory. And if you talked about no-go zones, you were called a conspiracy theorist or an anti-Muslim bigot, but now you have you have French military generals literally co-signing onto letters uh, to uh, to Emmanuel Macron, telling him that uh, France is at risk of being completely taken over through Islamic warfare. And so these concepts of no-go zones are not just concepts or conspiracies. These are real things that are happening. Europe has been fundamentally transformed. Uh, Western civilization is being conquered uh, with, um, with the, you know, the goal of creating an Islamic caliphate, caliphate or an Ummah, right? A one world uh, Islamic order. And the same thing is happening in the United States. I mean, people are talking about this egregious video out of uh, London where, where they were talking about, you know, screw the Jews, rape their daughters. But this is happening on the streets of American cities as well. They have massive coordinated pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel, anti-Jewish, anti-American, pro Hamas demonstrations in places like Chicago and New York City and Washington, D.C., and even in Boca Raton, even in Boca Raton in my own district just the other day, they had people with Palestinian flags talking about how they need to kill the Jews. Um, and, uh, you know, this is fervent Jew hatred. These, these, uh, these protests and gatherings are highly organized and make no mistake, they are pro-terror demonstrations. So we now have calm. I don't want to call it peace because there's a whole lot of rockets still sitting on the rocket launchers in Gaza, mm -hmm. pointed at central and southern Israel population centers. It was forced on the Israelis uh, and they capitulated. So in our last show, you talked about the Loomer plan. If they don't stop, turn Gaza into a parking lot. Should they have turned Gaza into a parking lot? They absolutely should, because look, the Israel is in a tough spot right now, right? Because they need they they need uh, support uh, from the United States, and of course, uh, you know, Joe Biden's administration uh, just recently authorized uh, funding for uh, weapon sales uh, to Israel. Um, but you know, Israel is held to a higher standard than any other country in the world. And so at what point should Israel say, you know, screw all these global uh, perceptions about what we should and shouldn't do and all these, you know, phony United Nations humanitarian standards that are, are just full of, double, uh, full of double standards and hypocrisies. I mean, for the sake of their survival, if they wish to remain a sovereign nation and, uh, you know, if they don't want to see the eventual genocide of six million people, I think that uh, they need to level Gaza. They need to completely obliterate and show no mercy to Hamas and, you know, anybody who supports Hamas or shows any tolerance for Hamas. And like I said, you know, look, uh, you know, it's the concept of, it's the concept, the philosophical concept of just war. Uh, you know, there are casualties and sometimes people need to die for the sake of achieving a greater good. Thanks for coming on today, Laura. Tell people where they can find you, please. Well, uh, you won't find me on any of the mainstream social media networks because I've been banned for speaking out against uh, Jew hatred and uh, Islamofascism. Uh, but you can find me on Parler and Gab at Laura Loomer and also on Telegram at Loomer Official. Terrific. And for those of you out there that haven't yet subscribed to ATP, please take out your cell phone and text the word TRUTH. T-R-U-T-H and send it to the number 88202 push send. You'll be signed up for free in about three seconds and it's always at no cost to you. For ATP Report, thanks for joining us. I'm Barry Newsbaum.